Good morning. It's time once again for Truth or Tradition with Steve Rainey, worship leader at B'nai Israel in Shreveport. His former pastoral experience provides a unique study into God's Word and how today's culture has damaged our knowledge and understanding. Here's Steve Rainey. Good morning. We're back again. Truth or Tradition. Steve Rainey here with uh, my guest in the studio, and I'm I'm really kidding. I, I don't want to call you a guest anymore. It's, it's like you're part of the show, man. And so, uh, Kenny, we're uh, back with me this morning, and uh, we're going to continue to uh, where we picked, where we left off yesterday. We're going to continue into the Word. Uh, and uh, Kenny, you were saying just a, a minute ago uh, about the guy that stopped by. You had something. Yeah. No. Um. I, thank you again for having me, Steve. And I, you know, I was just telling Steve off the air. I think what we're doing. I'm hoping that a couple of things get accomplished. Number one is that people's interest in the Word of God is peaked. And if we're having people that drop by the studio to, you know, meet us and things, obviously the Word of God is is being, you know, peaked in their life. They're being interested in what God's saying. But secondly, I think, you know, whether it's somebody at my church or First Baptist or First Methodist or somebody at your church, um, if we can get people to see, you know, there are some things that we disagree on, and I think a lot of it is semantics. There are some doctrinal things that we disagree on, but you know what? We agree on Jesus. Yeah. And there's, I, I believe that there's more that we be, that we agree on than disagree. And if the if we can get as believers to the point where we can see in each other, you know, and love one another despite them not being exactly like us. Yes, you know. Absolutely. Yes, I, I agree with you, and I and I do think that a lot of our difference is semantics. It's uh, yeah, we we we're, we're saying the same thing, meaning say we're meaning the same thing, saying it in a different way sometimes. On 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 some things. On some things. Yeah, there's some, some things. things that we disagree you're absolutely on. Absolutely wrong and... about the Sabbath. You're absolutely <laughs> wrong about the diet. <laughs> but I'll, I'll get you there because I believe that I, I believe that you are a man that's seeking truth. Uh, <laughs> and, I, I I believe. <laughs> That Jesus is the truth, and that the truth makes you free. And so, when you have Jesus, you're made free. And 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 I believe that. In John 16, Yeshua said, "When the Holy Spirit has come, He will lead you into all truth." When who? When when the Holy Spirit has come. When He has come. Yeah. Okay. So the Holy Spirit's male. Um. It's, you know. Come on, Steve. <laughs> that's what the Bible says. I believe that he's. I believe that he is the third person of the Godhead. Yeah. Hey, that's good because yeah. uh, a couple of you know weeks ago you were kind of iffy on. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't believe in the Trinity. I think I said you just said the third person of the Godhead. Well, well, wait a minute. Here, here again, we're talking about semantics, maybe. Okay. Trinity is not found anywhere in the Bible. I agree. It's not in your Bible the, or anybody else's but, Bible. But the, the but the principles there. The principle, but it's but that is a that comes out of church tradition, and what my understanding and and here again. Do you know the word Bible is not in the Bible too? Uh, well, the word Bible is Latin for book. Okay, that's why it's but called the holy book. It's kind of like people that say, "Ah, oh, the rapture is not in the Bible." Yeah. Well, you know, the word "catching away" is, yeah. and that's where the Latin word comes we'll from. That. I hope you don't believe in a preacher of blessed rapture. Oh, why not? What's wrong with that? <laughs> we, won't, we won't get that. It's today. the blessed hope in no, Titus. No, 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 no. Uh, I, I believe in a rapture, but I don't believe in a preacher of blessed rapture. But, uh, but anyway, we'll, 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 we'll get. We to may that we may differ on tribulation. We may. Yeah. I believe we've been in tribulation for two thousand years. I agree. I, I agree. That the mark of the beast is already here. I agree. It has been here. Uh, you know, one of my pastors said, you know, the church was born in tribulation and it'll be raptured in yeah. tribulation. Then John says in, 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 in Revelation chapter 1, he said, John, your brother in tribulation. Yeah. <laughs> he's, but, he's you know, you know, the, I think the part that most people miss is that seven years that we're talking about. Um, it's described in Jeremiah as the time of not the church's trouble. Jacob's it, trouble. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I think that's one of the that's one of the main things that people miss. And and but I I'm uh, and, and we won't go into this because it's not our study that we <laughs> that's what we do. <laughs> yeah, we I'm, jump into things uh, and we I just know, keep I know, going I know. In, in different directions. But uh, but when I was talking about the Trinity, uh, and and I don't know that we can find one definition of the Trinity in Christianity. This I think in First John five seven you get an awesome example of it. Uh, but when I say I don't believe in the Trinity as Christian teaches, I don't believe that that. Uh, uh, that when Jesus was on earth, mm -hmm. that there was no Father in heaven. Right. I, 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 I well, don't you understand see, that fully, but I, I, I don't believe that that Jesus is God and the Holy Spirit uh, all by himself. I believe that there are three distinct aspects of the Godhead, and those three are one 
in some way that I don't understand. I think that's completely right. Uh, you see that played out whenever Jesus was baptized. You know, um, God. The Father spoke to him. Yeah, the Father spoke. The Spirit descended, and but Jesus was of, here a lot on of earth. Believe that Jesus was a ventriloquist. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think that, that I good. think that you can clearly see that there's a trinity at work, yeah. and like you said, we don't have to be able to explain it. I don't think anybody can. This, um, you know that we would we would do it injustice to explain it. But I think there are certain things that you need to acknowledge, and you need to acknowledge that the Holy Spirit is God, Jesus is God, and God is God. I, I, you know, and and I'm like you, I. I, I don't have to understand that. There's yeah. A, there's a whole lot of things I can't explain. Yeah. You know. Uh, well, you know, a lot of, and the reason, you know, I pointed that out is a lot of, you know, we talk about some of the, the falsehoods that we see in the Christian church, but, you know, in the Hebrew roots kind of movement, you see some um, very bad things going on in there. I mean, I've seen where, you know, they, they go to the Kabbalah or the Talmud, you know, and they think that, you know, God the Father and Shekinah, the Holy Ghost, got together and made the Adam Kadmon and the, that uh, Jim Staley, you know, a lot of his teachings. And so that's why, you know, a lot of that stuff's kind of off. And though they may use the word Trinity, what they're talking about is a pagan reality of it. You know, there's so much, there's so much uh, falsehood out there. Uh, and Jim Staley, now, by the way, one of the guys that uh, I've, I've seen some great teaching with Jim, but but Jim can be wrong in some areas. I don't know of any teacher that I agree with uh, 100%. Yeah, no, I was, myself. I'm just using that as an example because, yeah. you know, we're always, you know, talking about the church, yeah. errors in the church, but there's a lot of errors in the Jewish roots movement as well, or uh, Hebrew roots movement. Kenny, I'm, as you know, I'm very much. Uh, in favor of going back to the Jewish roots of the faith and looking at the scripture through Hebrew yeah. tinted lens rather than Greco Roman tinted lenses. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And so, I got no problem with that. Yeah. I mean if you want to do that, that's I mean Because because it's it's a Jewish book about a Jewish Messiah and, and Yeshua, whatever you want to say about him, is an Orthodox Jewish rabbi. He, it's no question about that. He, and, yeah, I mean Jesus was a Jew. Yeah, but, but um, and as he said in John chapter four, this that talking to the woman at Samaria, you don't know what you worship. We know what we worship. Salvation right. is of the Jews first. Yeah. No, the Jews first. Well, didn't but, say first. well that's what the Bible says. But and Jew, it, it, what it what it means is is that God was bringing the Messiah through the through the Jewish race, and what He did is He brought the Lamb. OK. And when Jesus said he was going to fulfill the law, he nobody had ever walked in perfect obedience to the law, not only the letter, but the spirit of it. And Jesus did. And he sinlessly offered himself on the cross. And when his blood was shed, he instituted a new avenue of access for people to God. That's why the veil was rent in two from top to bottom, not bottom to top. I, and, and, and I agree with that. But I think that we we may disagree on on what the results of that were. Yeah, because yeah, we do Hebrews, we do we do disagree on the, the results only thing of it. That transferred yeah. there if, according to Hebrews. Now, Hebrews this is one of the places where the King James adds that word covenant and italics. Uh-huh. And but if we read it in context, it's talking about the priesthood. It was the priesthood that was changed, not the law. It was the priesthood. And from the Levitical priesthood and the sacrifices they offered daily that could only cover sins from year to year, mm -hmm. Yeshua offered His blood that could take away sin, and mm -hmm. He He could not be, as Hebrew says, a priest if you're on earth, because there was a Levitical system for that, and He was of the tribe of Judah, not of the of the Levites. Yeah, but He was He was doing away with that. No, the, 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 nowhere says that. Yeah, He was doing away with that. Nowhere does it say what He what He did is he, that the transfer of the priesthood from the Levitical to the priesthood of Melchizedek uh, is what changed, but it did not do away with the law. Okay, it let did me... Away the sacrifices. Let me read you what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Okay. He says in verse 6, it says, "...who hath also made us able ministers of the New Testament." Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth light. If the ministration of death written and engraven in stones was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be what? Done away. The glory that the letter brought was to be done away. Okay. What's the glory of the letter? You tell me. 
What do you think the glory of the letter is? The glory is whatever goodness you could attain through the law. Whatever good that it brought was to be done away. And it says in verse 8, How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious, or more glorious, if the ministration of condemnation, that's the letter, be glory, much more doth the ministration of righteousness and, and exceed in glory. And what is righteousness? Righteousness is your, your position in God. Uh-huh. Your, yeah, righteousness is a position that you, uh, well, that you, you receive. you find the verse that says that? Yes, yes you righteousness do. Righteousness is, is obedience to God's instructions. Righteousness it is... It shall be righteousness to you if you obey the commandments. That's, that's completely wrong. Righteousness is imputed to you by your faith in Jesus Christ. By, and how, I agree with that. This may be the semantics deal, but how do, you, how do you prove that you have saving faith? You don't have to prove it, but the, the, it says that the just shall live by faith. Okay? okay. And the, just simple faith in what Jesus did makes you righteous. And what James comes along and says, Kenny. what James comes along and says is that faith without works is dead. Right. And so what he says is if you have true faith, there will be some works attached to it. The, and in context, what James is talking about, look what Abraham did. Abra- you know, God told Abraham to go sacrifice Isaac. He said, okay, I believe, right, what right. God says. And instead of just going about his way, he went up, you know, to Mount Moriah and offered up Isaac or was going to offer up Isaac. Right. And so that's why it says it was reckoned unto him because he believed. And well, then he now, then he acted on that belief. And, but it's and you, I agree, but the, it's, it's called believe, saving faith. This word, be- but. You, you you only prove that you have saving faith by being obedient to God. You don't have to prove it. It's it's a way that you know that you have then, it. Then is the devil and the demon saved? No. They believe in Jesus. They, be- they believe in what he did. They, okay, they're spirit beings. Okay. But they believe in what he did. Yeah, but what they, they're, they're not humans. Okay. Humans are the ones that are called to believe. I mean, he died for the human race. Not He didn't die for demons. Okay, and so the human race, the sinful human race, are the ones that God calls on to repent and be redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Okay, and they're what what they believe is different than the way we believe. Do you do you believe that that as being saved by faith that we are children of Abraham? Yes. Yes. Physically. Physically. Spiritually. Spiritually. Yeah. Not physically. We're spiritually sons of Abraham. Yes. And that is accomplished by faith. Yes. Faith in the finished work of Jesus finished. Christ on the cross. That's right. Jesus so, paid it all. That's right. <laughs> believing, the believing that he is a lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. Yes, sir. And you remember that uh, Yeshua said to the scribes and the Pharisees at one time that if you were if you were Abraham's seed, you would do the works of Abraham. Right. OK. Now, yeah, but they were they were under a different covenant at that time. The new covenant hadn't started. The new covenant was the promise of Jeremiah thirty-one, thirty-one, of what God was going to do. You know, whenever Jesus was at the Last Supper, he said, "This cup, it's right." He said, "It's the New Testament." The right, not a New Testament, the New Testament. Right, and and so he's when and he's when referring to a testament, that's when already, when does the will and testimony go in effect? When someone's living or when they're dead? At the death of the testament. Okay, and so when he died on the cross, that's when the new covenant began. So, well, you know, when he's telling that the Pharisees, and uh, you know, that, you know, to be righteous and things like that, uh, that's what they were supposed to do under the old covenant. That's what they were supposed to do under the old covenant. I, I, will, I will agree a little bit, brother, but I I'm glad you that, agree a little bit. <laughs> I would say that I agree uh, with you a little bit, too. The, Steve. the new covenant is not uh, enforced or acted upon until the death of the test. Yes. It's like a will. Yeah, I've that's exactly right. Now, my will is written. Exactly. My my children are not going to inherit until I die, but it is written and it is a legal document. Yes. Okay. Yes. But but they can't take possession of that until the death un, until my death. Exactly, and that's and that was what you know Jesus was saying. Um, the cup was at the Last Supper. You know that's the New Testament, I, and so I, when I, when the blood when the blood was shed, the new covenant, the new access but, from man uh, to God I began. One hundred percent. But the okay. new covenant was that he would he would restore you, the house of Israel and bring them back into the relationship with him. That and and also. 
and also he would bring in Gentile, Gentile. believers. That's right, because because it's supposed to be a light to the Gentile nation. I agree. Okay? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Who's this? In, in Genesis chapter 26, what did Abraham do? Genesis chapter 26, uh, <clears throat> in uh, verse 4, I'm not going to read the verses 1 through 5, but in verse 4, Genesis 26 says, And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and I will give unto thy seed all the all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth, the Gentiles, what nations refers to. Uh -huh. You agree with that? Yes. Shall all the nations of the earth be blessed? Because, why? Because a, that Abraham obeyed my voice, kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. He didn't say just because Abraham believed in him, had faith in him. Now, we know Abraham did. But Abraham proved that he had faith by keeping, he obeyed my voice, he kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my law. I, so if we're, if we're children have, of Abraham, we should, as, G, as Jesus himself said, we should do the works of Abraham. Well, we can't do the works of Abraham. I mean, what we're called to do is to believe. I mean, it says in uh, Romans chapter 4, uh, talking specifically about him, uh, that he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded what he promised he was able to perform. Therefore, mm -hmm. because of his belief, therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. But and you told me a while ago you didn't believe in, you know, imputed righteousness. But well, no, no, it, no, no, righteousness, no. righteousness was imputed to Abraham because of what he believed, because he believed God was able to perform what he promised. No, and, no. and it goes on. Listen to the next verse, Steve. Now, it was written not for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also, <laughs> to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus now, our Lord from this, the dead. And, and, this and where, that's Romans 4, uh, verses 20 through 25. This is where you and I have uh, some problems. I'm, I'm really handicapped somewhat in that, that you don't want to go to the Greek or the Hebrew. But Well, when you go to the Greek or the Hebrew, um, I'll just put it like this. Let's just say there's a word like um, work, mm -hmm. okay, or... Uh, well, let's take the day. word believe. Let's take the word believe. We take the word believe. Okay, you, as an example, okay, mm -hmm. you can you can you know how many different d different Greek lexicons there are for the word believe? No, I don't. Okay, and so you could go, you could get a, a conservative, someone who believes in the Trinity, someone who believes in the work of Jesus Christ on the cross, someone and like them to define it. You could go very liberal. You could get into someone who rejects Jesus and get their definition of it. So when you say, well, the definition for believe is this, this, and this, well, who's telling you that? Where are you pulling that definition from? And well, for every definition you pull, I could pull one in the opposite direction. And so that's why you got to have the Word of God to be your final authority. I agree and be with that, just believe that what it says. Why, Kenny, I go to the Hebrew because it's a Hebrew when, book when you written say, by Hebrews about a Hebrew faith and a Hebrew Messiah. No, you don't You don't believe what I said because when you say, I'm going to the Hebrew, you're going to what someone's telling you the Hebrew is saying. Well, I'm telling you that the Hebrew... And you don't know who that someone is. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm telling you that Hebrew, the word in Hebrew for belief, is not the word in, anywhere near, uh, near what we get in Greek or the Roman thought. But the word belief, it, was, a, it wasn't written in Hebrew. This in Romans chapter four, you know, verse that. verse twenty four. It was not written in Hebrew. It was written in Greek. You don't know that. I, you have a manuscript that may be one hundred and seventy five years later, and you don't have one. But I got one, right, and you don't. All right, let's let's come to this. Let's I have a manuscript yeah. for Greek, and you let's, don't let's have a manuscript this. for Hebrew. We got. Let's come to this. You say you believe the the word was preserved. Okay. Now I believe what God said. I mean, okay, He said He listen, said He preserved listen, it. Let's listen to me now. Okay. Listen to this thought. Okay. Because I, I believe the word is preserved, too. And I believe that God gave us evidence for these last days to show us that my word has been preserved. Okay. I, I believe that. Okay. Now. Dead Sea Scrolls, that kind of confirms that his word that, is preserved. That's exactly where I was going. Now, with the Dead Sea Scrolls, we found fragments of, of most all passages of the Tanakh. Yeah. With the exception of the book of, of Esther. Now, but they found the entire scroll of which book? Was it Isaiah? Isaiah. That's yeah. correct. Uh, have you ever been to Israel? No. I have been seven, eight times. And in, in Jerusalem, they have a, 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 this building called the Shrine of the Book. Mm -hmm. And it's actually a white dome, but it looks like the, 
the clay jar that uh, the covering was over the jar the scroll was in. Uh-huh. It's, it's an amazing thing. But you go in there, and they have the entire scroll of Isaiah unrolled around. You can walk around this thing and look at it. Mm-hmm. It's the only one that they found totally intact. All all chapters. And, and what they tell us is that it is virtually identical. There were a, a couple of minor uh, uh, discrepancies, but nothing that changed the meaning of the text. Right. From from what we've had in what we call the Tanakh all this time. Now, I, I believe, no, I agree with that. Okay, I, I mean that that shows the preservation. That's right. But here, and you know that's why they're not continuing. You know that they stopped uh, all the uh, research of the Dead Sea Scrolls because the people that were doing it were trying to say the Word of God is fallible right but as they were looking at the dead sea scrolls they were seeing hey there's no errors in what about and so they stopped yeah and so now now look at this and, and this this is exciting this is exciting uh why why do you think now this happened in 1947 okay this is just before god brought jerusalem brought, brought the, bring yeah, israel brings back israel back yeah a nation born in the day that's right and so which I believe is fulfillment of biblical prophecy, right? Uh, uh, yeah, no, I do too. Yes, there's, there's no no question. Yeah, that, that's that it, had been scattered. Obviously, God's doing something in this century. Now, I believe I, I can't I can't uh, maybe not convince you or convince anyone else for that matter. Okay, but I think that there's a reason that the Book of Isaiah is the only one that was found complete. You know what? Well, I I mean I don't know why. I mean you like you well, said yeah, you can, yeah, but yeah. Isaiah has sixty six chapters. The Bible has sixty six books. The, the, you can marry them up from Genesis right. to Revelation. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and so I believe, I believe that God showed us uh-huh. that He had preserved His word. So he, you're he, you're cutting your legs out about your New Testament argument. No, no, no. Because Isaiah has sixty six books. I, I agree. Okay. I and after and after the thirty ninth chapter of Isaiah, when you start at chapter forty of Isaiah, you start seeing the the things about the Messiah. Chapter forty opens up with the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Yes. Was the minister John the exactly. I, I and, agree. And with so that. that that is another way that you can verify God preserved the word. I agree with that, but. But I, I love you right now, Steve. <laughs> I love you too, brother. I do, but you I speak still, in my you speak in my love language now. <laughs> yeah. But I still believe that, <laughs> that the writers of the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament, wrote in Aramaic slash Hebrew and not in Greek. But you don't have any proof of that. I I, I, I mean that's I I, do I, not be, have I believe proof. I'm a millionaire, but I'm not. Well, I don't have it. <laughs> you need to go join uh, Joel Osteen's church. <laughs> you believe you're a millionaire? I'm going to start. I'm going to start doing like Jim Staley and just stealing for people. How about that? <laughs> now wait, that's not. Fair. That's not fair. Well, I'm just <laughs> coming at you the way you come at Christians. No, no, no. I, I, uh, uh, Jim Jim Staley did uh, uh, go to prison because of something he did, but it was long before he got into the ministry. Mm, but he lied about he lied about it to his congregation. Uh, and, and I don't know. I wasn't there. It may be. No, it's on tape, but, but I'm not here to defend Jim Staley. Okay. Here. Well, I'm not here to defend <laughs> Joel Osteen. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, you know, if you but, come against, I'm just you saying. Know the name I, what I'm, oh yeah, and I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm totally with you. But I'm just saying, for every, everything that you see in the church that you can say, oh, that's not right. You can do the same thing in the Hebrew well, roots movement. And this, this, this is, uh, uh, you would say this is circumstantial. Okay. And 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 I, I would agree with that. But here again, what I'm just I'm I started years ago realized that the church is in a mess, and how did we get in this mess? Mm-hmm. And so I'm looking for ways out of it. I'm, okay. I'm looking for where did we go wrong? Yeah. And so I'm looking. Can we get some there. common ground? That's Can right. we move forward? And that's one of the things yeah. I think God's doing, like in our I, talks. I really believe. I really believe that. Uh, but. Uh, I do believe that it was written in Hebrew. Now you say I don't have any proof of that. No, you don't. Uh, we'll come back in the next in the next session, and I'll, I'll maybe get you to see where this uh, break came with Christianity, as they call it. Which okay. I don't like the word Christian. Okay. We'll do that. Yeah, we have. Uh, and uh, the break from the synagogue, from Judaism. Okay. Because th- that break did come at some point. I'm yeah. sure you'll agree. Oh yeah, I do. I do agree. Um, yeah, we we don't go to synagogue. That's for sure. Well, but and and the early church did. The first century they did. Yeah, there's a specific reason why too. Paul tells you in First Corinthians chapter nine why he went to the synagogue. Because that's 
where they went on Shabbat. No. He <laughs> says he says in First Corinthians chapter nine, and unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. And so what he did was he went where they were when he was in a place where there weren't Jews, like, um, you know, his uh, his speech to uh, in Athens, Mm -hmm. you know, um, he went where they were. He went up amongst all the statues of the false gods. And he said, you know what? I'm going to preach to you about that unknown God. So he wasn't worshiping with them all their false gods. He went there for a specific reason to tell them about Jesus. And that's the same reason he went into the synagogue. He tells you 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 20. Well, and and, and, and I agree with that. But Paul, uh, the synagogue worship actually came out of the Babylonian captivity. I agree. Yeah, and, yeah uh, you can't find a verse of scripture that says you have to meet on Saturday and assemble together and worship at the no, synagogue. You're right. But I can show you that the example of Jesus. Tradition. Not his tradition. No, no, no. I agree. Jesus went into the synagogue. Uh, I know he did. The synagogues. He never, you don't, you don't, you don't but he die. never, he never told us to do it. But we're told to walk as he walked. No, we're not. Yes, we are. We're told to believe on him. We're told he to said, search, he said, search the scriptures in them. You think you have life, but they are they which testify of what of the him. scriptures are. They that testify of me. So right. you're called to believe on him, on right. his, on his person. Not, you're not called, you're not saved by doing what he does. He's, first, he didn't come to show you how to do it. He came to do it. First Corinthians chapter 11 in your Bible. <laughs> <laughs> your, your English Bible that you believe is inspired. My English Bible. Yeah. Paul says, Be ye followers of me, even as I am also am of Christ. Okay? I agree with that. So he said he followed Christ. He didn't say he didn't say be ye believers. But that you know that yeah, what be he's saying is being a follower of Christ is going back to that term as a Christian. Um, you know that's who I go. That's who I follow. It's not saying I I walk like he walked. I don't go to the synagogue. I don't. I don't. Um, We're he, commanded to walk as he walked. First John. When it says to be a follower of Christ, it doesn't mean to go to the synagogue. Certainly it does. No, it doesn't. Hebrews, it means Hebrews it means says, forsake it, not the assembling of yourselves together as a matter of Sundays. The yeah, word. but that doesn't mean on Saturday. <laughs> you can you can assemble yourself together on Tuesday. That's uh, you can assemble together on Friday. You can assemble every day. Okay, okay. so he's not just talking about Sabbath. So you can meet but, together but at you're not other times. To me. What I was going to say is the word assembling there. In your English Bible, if you go to your Greek lexicon, <laughs> which it is which one? Sunagegi. Yeah, but which lexicon are you going to? That's well, it, that's my whole point. Is you can make the word say what you want when you start doing this Greek game. No, the, but <laughs> that's that's how all the people we're, died we're, in we're, in uh, Jamestown or Jonestown, or whatever. No, no, we're down we're down to one minute. Uh, this is good. We're going to come back, uh, uh, and and I want to go to because we're coming up on Passover when we come back. Uh, here uh, last week, sometime I believe it was, we, we were looking at Peter and, and the word Easter. Okay. Uh, and I want to come back and touch on that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, let's get back into that uh, for Wednesday's broadcast. Yeah, because uh, uh, you had you'd mentioned, I believe, that, that uh, uh, the Greek for Passover and Easter is the same word. Yes. And so I want to, and, and the fact that it was the days of unleavened bread, okay. Passover was already over. I want to sure. come back and touch on that. Because we're coming up on Passover, uh, we will observe it here April the 10th. That sundowns when we'll have our our Passover observance, and so since we're there, I want to come back and let's let's address that a little bit. This is good. Uh, listen, if you've got questions, if you've got something you'd like for Kenny and I to address, I want you to contact us. Contact the radio station. You can write to us here at the Promise, uh, the radio station, and and send us your questions. We'd love to address them if you've got specific questions that uh, you'd like for us to read, to address. But we're going to be back here and continue on the next side. Shalom aleichem. <laughs> You've been listening to Steve Rainey, worship leader at B'nai Israel in Shreveport. For more information and worship times, visit ShreveportMessianics.com or check out the Facebook page at Shreveport Messianics. Tune in weekday mornings at 930 for more truth or tradition with your host, Steve Rainey.